confident since we watched him run last time. I, I'm extremely confident that he's going to run big here on Saturday. Extremely confident. And how has he developed in the time that you've had him, which is about since, what, May? Uh, well, you know, he, he has, I don't know if you want to use the development thing. You know, we picked him up in the, in the middle of his four-year-old season. He's supposed to be developed by then. Mm -hmm. But what has happened with him, I just believe that we got him at the right time where he was getting good. I think just the little things that we did, which was Ian McKinley putting the glue on for the Whitney, and then afterwards we glued him on behind, and I think that has made a big difference with him. Also, he's picked up a lot of weight, which he kind of needed. So those are really the only two things that, that he needed and he got. And now everyone can see what he can do with when he's when he's really right when he's really a full racehorse and that's what he is right now but i do believe that we got him at the right time we just got so lucky but when you know it's the same thing that we do around all of our horses in you we want to do everything with that we possibly can to make it easier for them to be as good as they can be and when you get a horse like him and and you see that he's you know right away when we took his front shoes off we could see he was awkward so we called Ian. We shot him regular for the Met Mile. But he just needed glue on shoes in order for him to get better and better. And that's what happened. How so did you tell? through the blacksmiths that we have and through how he cools out sometimes when he would had the steel uh, shoes on him, just a little bit tender maybe because his walls were so thin. But when you get into the experts like Ian and Tom Curl and even my blacksmith, they t my blacksmith said, Rick, it's going to take me four or five shoeings to get him straightened out. We didn't have that kind of time, so we called Ian, and right away, you know, Ian just said, look, man, we got to glue him on. There, there is no other way, and we did, and it helped him out so much, and it's continuing to help him. You know, he's able to be himself now the right way, and we're just so happy that... Uh, He's taken to all this the right way. He's put on a lot of weight. He just looks tremendous, man. And he's so happy. You know, all the adjectives that you want to describe a horse that are good, it go, belongs being around him right now. He is just so happy. And he is ready to run. He's more than ready to run. He's tired of waiting around now, you can tell. So you guys gambled a little bit in the summer. You decided to... You were going to go to the Forgo, decided to try the Whitney. Um, I was talking to Cl Clint Cornett the yeah. other day, and he said, you know, you guys recommended, let's try this. So you win the race, and it's a win and you're in. So back in July, did you project this horse? You had him out for a little while. Did you see him in the Breeders' Cup Classic at that time, or was he a sprint horse at that time? Well, Taylor? when Mark sent me the horse, he said he wanted to keep him sprinting. So, you know, we ran him in the Met. He ran a big race. We could see that there was improvement coming, and we were heading towards the Forgo when Andrew Burns called me, and he says, Rick, this Whitney, we got three horses in there. I says, who are they? And he told me, and I know we could be two of them. So I called Mark. I said, Mark, this is what's happening. So he says, Rick, let's enter. Let's see if we want to do it. And we entered, and we seen that we really only had one customer to deal with, which was my horse. We, we, we were confident we could beat the other two. And the other two horses that came in at the last minute, we didn't consider them a threat. So we took a shot. And it just worked out. But we were happy to go to the Forgo, too. You know, I know those sprinters are on it. And, I, you know, but we were confident to go in there. We, we got a nice horse, man. So it, just, it, it was just fate that happened. Just something saying, hey, let's do this. And we all agreed, and we did it. And the horse loved it. Now you got to go a mile and a quarter with him. He hasn't done that with you, but he's run a mile and a quarter before. Yeah. Uh, what's your thoughts about that? I'm licking my lips because I just watched him run last time. 
I, I see him running better this time. He's just we he's just been so much on it, so deadly in the mornings. He is he's given us all signs that he's gonna run a huge race. So I forgot your question. A mile and a quarter. Oh I'm not I'm not worried about that in any kind of way. We didn't even talk about going into the mile. We were just Let's go there, man. This is his next start, and let's get him out there as soon as we can so he can prepare himself. Mm -hmm. And it's just worked out great for us. Great. And through your career, has that been a, a, something that you've done, send horses, you have to send them No, nope, I kept St. Liam at Belmont, yeah. and when he came out, I mean at Aqueduct, and when he was doing super, and when I came out for the Santa Anita Derby, he'd never run a step. And Edgar got off of him, and he said, Rick, I'm going to tell you something. These were the best horses around, and he only got beat four lengths to him. And he never run a step. He said, this is a, this is a good horse. Mm -hmm. He says, for him to run like that in this track, he said he, he didn't like it at all. And that, that kind of, you know, so I'm saying to myself, why, why do we have to take him down and train him on the training track when you got possibility of the weather? when we could come out here and just be like clockwork, clockwork. And that's where he's gonna run, that's where he needs to be. So that's kinda just what we did. And every weekend, it's been pouring in New York. So his, just like his training schedule out here was messed up by, not by our horse, just by unknown factors, down there in New York, it would have been messed up too because, you know, I like the six days, breezing every six days couldn't do it there even if he was there he couldn't do it because of the weather I don't know if I, I might have watched it sometime not every year not it wasn't something you made a point of doing no yeah no no I, I, I mean how does it feel to be standing here with it might <laughs> feels be the favorite in Breeders Cup Classic from where you were to where you are right now it feels good I feel great I really do feel like you're in the right place at the right time yeah. yeah, yeah, man. Very happy with things. Our yeah. horse is doing good, so I am happy. If you would have talked to me when I seen that he wasn't 100%, I would not be happy. Yeah. But right now, our horse is on it, and I am happy. I don't care what happened yesterday. I only am interested in what happens tomorrow. But I'm very happy. When did you develop that philosophy? My horses give it to me. Yeah. You know, when they're not right, when there's something wrong, you, you can't be... You can't be on top of the world. You, you, gotta, you gotta try to get back on top of the world. And the only way of doing that is through your horses when they're right, when they show up, for me. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I just am all into horses and they control my mind. When they're not right, neither am I. When they're right, I am. <laughs>